Mic check. Mic check. One, two. Mic check. Mic check. One, two.
Darren, I'll wait for your cue. Well, good afternoon, and a very warm Hail Wildcat welcome to each of you. To many of Bethune-Cookman University's most loyal supporters, members of campus leadership, leaders in our community, members of the athletic department staff, several of our head coaches are here today, and several of our Wildcat football players, you'll see them upstairs. We welcome all of you here today, and thank you for taking the time to share this moment with you. I am George Bright, I am the Deputy Director of Athletics, and again, a special welcome. And a special welcome to our media that's here today. We will have an opportunity to engage with a few questions in just a moment, and a warm welcome to our Cat Eye Network folks that are here today as well. You're listening and watching, and we thank you. As we welcome our 16th head football coach to Bethune-Cookman University, Raymond Woody. Very shortly, we will hear from President Drake, Director of Athletics, Reggie Theus, as well as Coach Woody. But in the spirit of our founder, Dr. Mary McLeod Bethune, let's go in prayer. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this opportunity. We thank you for as we move forward. We thank you for what Dr. Mary McLeod Bethune has done for us. And we thank you for this 100th year of football. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. A dynamic and focused global leader that creates a clear vision and a strategic direction that has consistently delivered results in a domestic and international markets, his experience has led him to be a champion of targeted recruitment and people development, allowing him to build teams for sustainable organizational leadership. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our president and our chief wildcat, Dr. Lawrence Drake. Well, good morning, and um, certainly I am absolutely thrilled to be here uh, today, and this is an, an amazing occasion, and it's taken a while for us to get to this moment, but boy, are we glad we're at this moment. We're at this moment when we get to welcome our new coach, uh, our new head coach, uh, Raymond Woody. You know, Dr. Bethune didn't have football when she founded this place, but she always envisioned the spirit of connectivity, the spirit of collaboration, and more importantly, the spirit of family. And one thing we know about the Wildcats is that we are a family, we are a community. And regardless of what may happen from day to day and regardless of what you may see and hear, we know how to come together. Well, today is that day. Today is that day when we celebrate this community's work, we celebrate this community's effort, we celebrate what the future will be, not just for Coach Woody, but for his players, for this university, and for this community. There is no better way or no better time that I think we're in than this season. You know, the Bible says that there is a time and a season for everything. And then that season has arrived here at BCU in this moment. So I want to just welcome Coach Woody, his family, I want to welcome all of you here to this event because it is special. This moment is special, and the best is yet to come. And oh, by the way, the Wildcats haven't done their best work yet. I'd now like to introduce our AD, Reggie Theus. Thank you, thank you, President Drake. I um, welcome to the day that it seemed like it was never going to get here. <laughs> um, I first want to. Thank my staff, uh, George Bright, my deputy AD, my two senior associate athletic directors, Tara Davenport and Scott Summers, uh, for helping me facilitate this process, both processes. Um, took over about a month and a half, but it seemed like it was about a year and a half. I want to thank our president, uh, Dr. Drake, our BCU alumni, our BCU administration, our board of trustees, for bearing with us through these processes and thanking them for their support and their trust. We are BCU strong. I must thank our search committee who took all of our calls at this drop of a hat. It seems like sometimes we were in a rush or that we had to deal with somebody else's schedule, but they were always there 
our university communications, my SID for informing everybody of the processes. We had over 150 applicants in this, for this position. It's a very tight process. We had a grading system. Sometime we agreed, sometime we didn't agree, and most of the time we just agreed to disagree. But I guess that's really how it's supposed to go. Uh, and I want to also thank our student athletes who participated, shared their voices, and gave us their input. I am uh, very happy to have Coach Raymond Woody as our next football coach at Bethune-Cookman University and to lead this storied program. You know, we felt very confident in his experience, his leadership. He embraced the spirit of Dr. Bethune. And in this 100th year of BCU football, we are locked in in trying to give you a championship culture at this university. He provided an idea and a program that talked about high-level student athletes academically and on the football field. It is evident, myself, my staff, and everybody who has been connected with Coach Woody, and I had a chance to spend a lot more time with him in the last several days. He's actually a really good guy on top of that. Um, it is clear that, that that is the reason he's been successful every place he's been. I got a chance to meet his family, beautiful family. Uh, and I want to welcome Coach Raymond Woody, Jr. to be our 16th head football coach at Bethune-Cookman and start the Raymond Woody era of football. Congratulations, Coach. I want to present you with this hat. Thank you. This, this jersey. Oh, man. I'm not sure he can fit this anymore. <laughs> and, and best of all, I want you to put this on and yeah. let me have your jacket. I got it, Coach. I got it, boss. Man. Got all this help. I, got I like this help. This is the last time, too, by the way. Here you go. I get to hold the jacket this time. Yeah. Wildcat. Yeah, Wildcat. Yeah. Hey, you go. Hell, Wildcats. Look good. You looking good, Coach. Hell, Wildcat. Oh, man. Good afternoon, Wildcat Nation. Uh, I'm so incredibly happy and honored to be chosen as the next head football coach at Bethune-Cookman University. As many of you know, I played football here at Bethune-Cookman in the early 90s and graduated in 1996 as an academic and football All-American. During college, I met my wonderful wife, Stephanie, of 23 years here. We have three amazing kids, Ray the third, which is at, uh, he's at uh, Cal Berkeley, just graduated, and uh, Alana, my daughter, she's a freshman at the University of Central Florida. And then uh, Caden Woody, who's, uh, he's an eighth grader, he decided to stay home and play in his basketball championship game. It feels so good to be home. I want to start by thanking President Dr. Drake and Athletic Director Reggie Thiers and the rest of the BCU administration for this opportunity. Over the years, I have held numerous coaching positions from the high school level to Division I institutions under Willie Taggart and have established amazing relationships throughout the state and across the country. As the next head football coach, I will have a strong focus on creating a winning culture. The academic, personal, and professional development of our players, recruiting the best and brightest from the state of Florida and from around the country, and enhancing our engagement with you all and the members of our university community. Now, in the first 30 days, I will examine and feel our staff individually equally committed to both on and off the field. Then I will meet with all the players individually and get an opportunity to know a little bit more about them as well as them knowing a little bit more about me. Next, team up with the athletics department, including academic, student development, marketing, facilities, and all departments that support us. 
we will discuss how we can collaborate to strengthen our football program and partnerships. Also, partner with the university community, including senior stakeholders, donors, boosters, alumni, the student body, and the university faculty and staff. I recognize that those relationships are vitally important. To achieve our program goals, our university community will play a pivotal role. You are the backbone of our program. We will host several programs that enable the university community to engage with us and learn how they can support our program. We plan to implement a guest coaches program, supervised player meet and greets. I look forward to establishing a solid foundation for our team. The goal is that our work will turn into wins, ultimately enhance the success of Bethune-Cookman University football and the university as a whole. We cannot define the success of our football program solely based on our wins on the field. Although those wins are top priority, we must also define success in terms of graduation rates, holistic development of our student athletes through life skills development, providing mental health resources, participation in community service, and NIL education for our players. Parents, grandparents, guardians, your young men have committed to BCU, and I am committed to them and their success in life. I do not take this new responsibility lightly. I know I will create wins for our Bethune Cookman football program because I have a passion for the game, our university, and the young men I have the opportunity to impact. I also look forward to impacting the lives of players as I recruit more high school athletes from the state to join the BCU family. Finally, I have an immense drive for winning, and I look forward to this journey and sharing it with you all. Now let's not show up to work, let's get to work. Hell Wildcats. Hell Wildcats. Thank you. So at this time, we'll take questions uh, from the media. We'll start off the first question with Mr. Dan Ryan, who needs no introduction. Dan? C Coach, welcome back. Coach, when you were here, you were part of a legacy. You beat Florida A&M. Yes. And also, you, you had the opportunity to work with Coach Sy and Coach Wyatt. Talk about being part of that, that legacy and how you plan about Im implementing that legacy in your program. Well, uh, you know, those guys, you know, they're legendary. And, you know, I know one thing, um, you know, they had a plan, which I would have a plan, and, and we just showed up and went to work. You know, we didn't care about facilities or all this extra stuff that, you know, people visualize that a program need. Obviously, we know things need to uh, progress in order to be at the upper echelon, but I mean, we didn't, I mean, they taught us hard work, you know, pays off. And I mean, that's, we had a group of guys, you know, sharing the same cause and, and that's why we were successful. Uh, Jessica Ely with Fox 35, it's for you, Reggie. Just with all the drama that has been <coughs> the past month with uh, Ed Reed and all of that, just how important was it to make sure that you got this hire right? Uh, it's it, extremely important. Uh, we took extra time. We spent extra moments together. Um, the great part about it is there's no doubt in my mind that he embodies the spirit of Dr. Bethune. There's no doubt in my mind I've had even spending time with him at the Orlando Magic game last night. Uh, just embracing the moment with him and spending time with his family, you can see where his values are. And we have to have someone uh, that has the right spirit, right decorum, and represent our university proudly. So with that said, winning solves a lot of those problems. And his background, where he's been, his successes, who he's worked for, 
And, and I always say that, and he and I had this conversation, sincerity is still the most important thing when it comes to coaching. Your players will let you coach you hard as you want as long as they know you're sincere about what you, you're talking about. And Coach Woody brings that to the table. So yes, it's very important, and I appreciate that question. Thank you. Coach Woody, this question is for you. My name's Jerry Bell from hellwildcats.com. Um, yes, Dr. Drake and the official announcement from the university and Coach Theus just mentioned that it was important to have someone who embodied the traditions of this university and the spirit of Ms. Bethune. So can you tell us what type of man, what type of person is Raymond Woody? I'm a lawyer guy, uh, but first, foremost, uh, I'm a man of faith. Um, and whatever, you know, God blessed me to do in life, I do it with the right heart. And like, um, you know, Athletic Dia said, sincere. You know, I'm sincere about what I'm doing. And I'm a teacher, you know. I told the guys um, moments ago, I mean, I can be up and I can be down. I always stay level. I don't need to be a rah-rah guy all the time, but I'm a teacher and also a developer. Coach, Andreas Butler, Daytona <clears throat> Times, Florida Courier Newspapers. Um, what are some of the biggest challenges you have to building a successful program coming in? What do you see are some of your biggest challenges to make this team, make this program this successful the way you want it to be? Well, you know, I, I just think uh, Dr. Drake and athlete director Theus for giving me the opportunity again. Um, just having a plan, you know, coming in, knowing what to expect, knowing that things are going to get better. Uh, my challenge is just being able to, um, you know, get to know the players. And I told the players that. You know, give me an opportunity because I know with all of the transfer reporter stuff going on, but I bet on myself. Give me an opportunity to meet with each and every one of you, and I promise you, you guys will want to play for me. Coach Chris Vanell from the uh, Daytona Beach News Journal. Welcome back. Thank um, you. Just kind of starting out, had you been back on campus, uh, you know, since you had graduate and uh, since you had graduated, and uh, what are kind of the differences you saw, you know, 25 years ago compared to now? I tell you what, I mean, the school, you know, the university, obviously it was Bethune Cookman College when I was there, uh, but now it's Bethune Cookman University. I mean, it's it's grown. I mean, I was back here 2017, had an opportunity to kind of convince Coach Willie Taggart when I was coaching at Oregon. And we did a camp here. But all of this, I mean, was starting to go up. And I tell you, it's amazing. I mean, when I walked on campus and talked with, uh, you know, Dr. Drake and, you know, uh, athlete director, Coach Theus, and also George Bright, I was amazed at what I've seen and gathered. Back here. Hi, Coach. I'm Cordesia Clark with WMNG TV on campus. Yes. And I just would like to ask, you said that you're bringing back tradition and trying to instill it into the players. So um, how do you think that you're going to change the players um, now, between now and to the season and even after college? And how do you think you will help them grow into successful black men? Well, that's a gr great uh, question. You know, just, uh, you know, having a plan, you know, coming in, educating them on being a student, you know, slash athlete. And obviously I have to monitor that behavior, you know, had the opportunity, as you guys know, being an academic, you know, all American first in the classroom and then on the field, but just, you know, showing them that, you know, the NFL, all these guys want to go to NFL, but NFL stands for not for long, but we're going to make sure we get that meaningful degree. <clears throat> For you, uh, just wondering, what does a successful season look like for you, like realistically, this year? Well, um, first of all, foremost, you know, being able to concentrate on getting these student athletes to graduate, and then also making sure that 
our APR is the highest that we possibly can make it. And, and that's, that's my success. And I think when you do it the right way in the classroom, it's going gonna, it's gonna to trickle down to everywhere else. You know, like I told the players, you know, it's all about, you know, being smart, physical, aggressive, and fast. And being smart, that covers a lot, you know, discipline, doing the right thing in the classroom, you know, on the field. So when those things happen, you know, wins are going to come. You know, if you ask me, are we going to do better than we did in the past? Yes, we are in all aspects. <clears throat> Coach, uh, two things. Um, one, what are you going to do to um, recruit more local talent? We have some talented teams around, around town. Uh, like these kids going other places, that's one. And two, um, as a recruiting-wise, uh, what are you going to be able to do this year? Because uh, you definitely have had a late start so far. Um. Well, uh, that's a good uh, question. Like I told the players, and first of all, this is my home. BCU made me. so. You know, at the end of the day, I want to make sure that we collect the staff and we're going to start in Volusia. I mean, we're going to go up and down and make sure we know these coaches inside out and they know us inside out because it's all about relationships. You know, having an opportunity that's going across the country. You know, I, I was in Eugene, didn't know a whole lot of people, but at the end of the day, you know, having relationships and people trusting you, that's going to help, you know, with recruiting. As for where we're at now, I'm focusing on the guys we have here. I, I told them, I'm focusing on the guys we have here. <clears throat> so uh, two questions, one football related, another one personal. Um, the first football question, have you, what type of schemes should we expect from you, both defensively and offensively? How do you envision your team playing and what type of schematics are we gonna see on the field? Well, again, the guys I spoke with them this morning, we're gonna be smart fast, physical, and aggressive. I mean, we're going to, in all aspects, offense, defense, special teams, we're going to bring the best coaches in here. And it's going to be a KISS method. I, I, I don't like the word keep it so stupid. I don't use that. It's going to be keep it so simple. These guys going to be able to play fast. And the, the product we're going to put out on the field is not going to be a whole lot of thinking. We're going to allow these guys to utilize their talent. <clears throat> And then second question, you mentioned Willie Taggart earlier, and obviously you guys grew up together and you traveled with him from Western Kentucky to Eugene, back to Florida. Just what is, first he gave you your opportunity to be a college coach, but what are some of the things that you glean from him as both a coach and a human being? Well, you know, he was a player's coach. I, I tell you what, uh, one thing, you know, about Coach Taggart, uh, people would say everywhere he's been, He's had an open door policy, and that's something that I want to have with the players because it's about the players. I mean, you know, those players are the reason why we have jobs. So we have to be able to take care of the players first. You mentioned uh, meeting with your team this morning. Uh, what was that meeting like, that initial meeting? Well, I guess some of the players are him. I, I, some of the players are here. They, they, they'll be able to tell you. But it was, you know, at the end of the day, just laying down you know, some ground rules and just making sure that I always told them, I said, you don't need to be in this meeting if you have class, you know, go to class. You know, we, we talked about being a student first, you know, talking about being a student, talking about administration, you know, putting the presidents on, being able to go to summer school, both summer A and B, and they got it all excited about that. And I was like, man, we're on the right track. Any other questions? <clears throat> this is not a question. Man, I'll tell you what, man. I, I haven't changed. You look good. <laughs> you look real good. I am probably the only person in here who fed that young Took man. Took care of me. Took care of him yeah. when he was she, a student and fed him. I yeah. want to say to you, and the, cafe, the dining hall is totally different now. You I will bet. be very pleased with that. But I want to say to you, <clears throat> if you could do for these football players and instill in them the kind of student and athlete that you were, I know we won't do anything but win. We'll win on the field and off the field. And I'm here to support you 150%.
whatever I can do. Welcome home. Thank you. And I have some other ones, like the Nick Collins and all. I always brag, brag about those students, and I'm, I'm sure you'll bring that back. Yes, I, I, I promise I will. That's it? Man, that was easy. So we will, we will have time for some one-on-ones if that's what you'd like to do. Uh, also, I'm going to ask President Drake and A.D. Theus and Coach Whitty to come back so you can actually get that photo of the jersey and the hat. We kind of moved through that quickly, but I want to give you the opportunity to get that photo. Can you guys stage that again? Thanks. Thank you. Thank you everybody. We're, we're going to have one more comment from one of our students who was involved in our process. Conroy Cunningham is going to come up and just say hello to you for a moment and answer maybe a question or two that the media might have. Greetings, everybody. My name is Conroy Cunningham. I'm a student athlete here at Bethune Cookman University. Um, yes. Um, I definitely think it's a great honor to be included in the process of finding our 16th head coach here at BCU. Um, I also feel like it was vital to include the players, um, especially considering the amount of drama and things that was going around. Um, including the players, I feel like, has allowed us to buy in more to Coach Woody and. Um, feel like we were, our opinions were important and were heard. When did the um, players switch from Ed Reed and say, okay, Wood is our guy? Um, after talking with our AD and um, our president, we, uh, we had to move forward and we had to see brighter days. Um, they say tough people, uh, they say tough times don't last, but tough people do. And BCU, our, our athletics and our students here are as, as tough as they come, and we're just looking forward to the Raymond Woody era. One last question. What's the mood like amongst the players right now? The mood, um, we're ecstatic. We rejoice that um, the train is back moving, and then we also have a conductor that can lead us to the places that we need to go. And so we're very excited. Thank you, everyone. Have a great afternoon. He wants to, he wants to give us a check. Spirit of, spirit of what we're all trying to accomplish. Uh, there's been a lot of conversation about um, football helmets and things of that nature. I got it all from HBCU Go. Game day, of course, and uh, they not only wanted to talk about it, but they wanted to put their money involved in it and help out. And this is how you, this is how you make it work. You speak about it, but then you turn around and you be about it. And this is what he's coming here for us today. On behalf of uh, HBCU Game Day and our team, as you know, we cover HBCUs across the country. And um, especially after I had a one-on-one -on -one interview with um, Coach Theus, I still call him Coach, um, I kind of understood, we understood the assignment. As HBCUs, we have to step up our support. And since our business makes money by reporting on the HBCUs, we wanted to make a gift. And one of the things that, you know, we're not ESPN or anything like that, but one of the things that Coach Theus told us about was the helmets. So we decided that we would donate 10 helmets to Bethune-Cookman University. Mm -hmm. 
So we got with Alvin Wyatt Jr. He, he ordered the helmets and then he called me back and said, hey, they're running a special. If you buy 12 helmets, they'll give you two free. So we couldn't go back to the staff and necessarily tell them to pony up that. So Tolly Carr, who is our anchor in Atlanta, he paid for one. And then the last one was donated by the son of someone who's from New Smyrna Beach, Florida. Came to Daytona Beach Community College for two years. Two years at Bethune-Cookman College and graduated in 1959 and allowed him to make a better life for our family, my father. So I bought the final helmet in honor of my father. So we, uh, it's already been paid. He can tell you the invoice is paid. The helmets are actually on the way. This is just symbolic. But uh, especially seeing the fellows up top, this is what it's all about. It's about supporting you guys. Um, my name is Vaughn Wilson, and my father's name is Roosevelt Wilson. We're going to ask, ask you guys to stand here. There's still some more photos that folks are going to want to take. Uh, but this concludes our day. Thank you, everyone. We got one more? Oh, okay. Oh, well, terrific. I did not know. By the way, those helmets are $500 a piece, just so you know. And we'll take any other donations. <laughs> My name is Arnell Spencer. I'm the on-premise director for SR Parat, a local bitter distributor in Daytona. Um, a little short story about me. I actually went to BCC back in the day for one semester. I actually came back from um, Edinburgh State University. It was only one semester, though. But I ended up transferring to UCF, and you guys didn't beat us. Uh, <laughs> but work, I've been working out here almost six years now. and. I'm happy to be in a position to help donate that amount of money, and we have more to come, uh, to the program and welcome you back home. That's All right? Awesome. That's awesome. So I'm going to donate $10,000 oh, go. for the athletic program. Let me see this thing. Let me see this here. <laughs> <laughs> here we go. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> That's great. Thank you so much. Yeah, Thank you so much. Absolutely. Well, Dr. Drake, come in here, Coach. So we any more donations? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Let's stand up here. Mike. That one might come. That one might show up. If there are no more donations, we'll, <laughs> but we'll wait a second if you want us to, okay? Thank you, everybody. Have a great afternoon. Thank you.